Alrighty then, now that the whole thing crashed, we're re-recording. Let's see what happens. <laughs> For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake, dude. Has ever drink sake before? Oh, You're yeah. doing the whole thing at the beginning again? You damn right. We're starting it all over. ADLR Podcast, episode 53. Brian's excited to do this for the second time. Hmm. And Kelsey is too, even though he's muted. I'm muted? I'm not muted. Oh, it looks like you were talking. No, I was just laughing because I got a really good role in a game that I was playing. What are you playing? Path of Exile. Oh, okay. And then Randall on the phone, Verde in the background. What's up? Mm-hmm. Nothing much. It's, it has not, my my deep side has nothing to do with the current state of this podcast. I'm literally trying to fight a headache. How, how's the fight going so far? He's failing. I think I might be winning. Good. That's good to hear. It's right not. Give some alcohol. Well, technically, it's not me. It's the 800 milligrams of a uh, a leave I just took. That's safe. Sure it is. If you'd like to play it safe, you can go to patreon.com slash ADLR plays <laughs> and support a channel that What a transition. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that was amazing. And support the channel and, uh, you know, go to patreon.com slash ADLR plays. Uh, um, also go to extralife.adlrplays.com if you want to support Extra Life, which is a charity. Uh, the proceeds from my link goes to Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children. And as always, you can go to topicsadlrplays.com if you want to submit a topic for us to talk in the future. In the future. Fuck. In future podcasts. I keep forgetting Start that. Start it up again. Uh, we're, please don't say that because then this fucking thing will crash again for whatever like goddamn reason. <sighs> Let's get it started then before this thing shits on us again. Um, What are we talking about? Oh, yeah. It, it yes. threw me off. The crash threw me off. What did you guys do? This, this is going to be a short episode. Fourth of July week, there's no news happening. I didn't consume shit this week, and I'm you know, actually this week we're gonna consume stuff. Last week I didn't consume anything, but um, yeah. What you guys do this week, Rand- Randall? Besides your headache, what'd you do? Went to work, went to the gym, worked yep. the lawn, yep. the animation for the intro for my gaming channel, so that I could stay on schedule. Um, I took a look at the stuff that Bryant sent for your introduction. I haven't actually started on anything though. Um, I just got a new, it's, it's a new gig, but it's not a new gig. It's with the same people. It's just now they have a a new project that they want me to work on. So that's good. Is there another boat or? Nah, it's a, a building with some, uh, I don't know how you explain it. It's just like a building is in the middle of a forest or something like that. Like in Ant Man. In Ant Man. Like in Ant Man, when they were traveling around with the suitcase building, and then they were in the middle of the forest. Okay. You mean like a hut? What are you? What kind of building? I don't know. I have to. I have to see. They haven't given me any reference yet. That's about it. Jeez. All right, so you put escape plan and a shaft on here for no reason. That's weird. Oh. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I watched those two, Fuck those two movies. Randall. Too. I totally forgot, man. Like, I also put it at the bottom. I don't know if maybe you forgot. No, I didn't forget. It's that I don't have a TV for because we don't really talk. Like, I don't have that as a notable release for TV. Like, seasons of TV, I'm like, ugh. This is a season of TV. A movie's different to me. I think I will, I will, hmm, I would hold a movie in more in, in a higher regard than TV, because there is seasons, so they can just write their way till, like look what happened to The Walking Dead, all those other shows that last way too fucking long, because of seasons. Movie, you get one fucking shot, you know. Hmm. And if it comes out excellent, then that movie's excellent. And I guess that's the same with TV miniseries, because Chernobyl is fantastic. But. Anywho, that was yeah, that was my um segue to your movies that you saw, Randall. I don't know why you said that was it when you yourself put those on here. I mean, I, <laughs> wait. So, oh god, are you are you wanting me to talk about them now? Yes, Rand. That's 
when I when I ask you guys what you this is week, weird. It's, it's not weird, but it's different. Usually, you had you go through everybody's what they did, and then you start talking about consume stuff. I've been blending them in this uh, more recently. Okay. It's what you guys do, and then while you're telling me what you did, it's going to include what you have <sighs> on this consume list. So the escape plan is a Sylvester Stallone movie. It also has a, a <laughs> Dave Bautista in it. And don't forget 50 Cent. And 50 Cent, uh, which, I mean, he has a very small role, so it's almost like not even worth mentioning. Um it's a continuation of I think he has two other escape plan movies I only seen the first one I didn't see the second one and I just decided to watch this one um you are correct there is three there's three of them okay this movie wasn't great at all it like it was weird because when I was watching it I kept thinking to myself that Sylvester Stallone is a a huge movie star why is he making a movie like this why why is he in a movie like this and I could understand the other actors because there's other actors that I've seen before that's in that movie. Uh huh. But they're not like. I hope I'm not like really stepping on anybody's shoes, but they're not really A list actors. Okay. Some of them are martial artists. But anyway, in short, the movie's about. So Sylvester Stallone's character in the Escape Plan movies is that he's a specialist in um, breaking into, no, breaking out of unbreakable places, which are prisons. Okay. So because he has that that skill, um, they hire him. Companies hire him to build facilities that are unbreakable. So, cause he's obviously, he's going to think of every way and he's, he's able to look at a system and see where the weaknesses are. Okay. So that's his whole, his character's whole backstory. But this movie takes place because a previous employer, oh no, a previous partner of his screwed him over in the the, the last movie because this this is what they mentioned in the movie. He screws him over and um, he does like a little payback thing and ends up killing him. Okay. So the guy's son comes back in this movie as a revenge type thing. So it's this elaborate plan where he kidnaps. This, this girl so that the bodyguard would, would end up carrying a message to Sylvester Stallone's character so that he would come and break them out and then he would have... Rather than just trying to track him, he goes through this elaborate, unnecessary plan. Okay. Basically. So, in short, the movie is just about him going to this facility with... Um, was like a... Pri- it's not really a prison. It, it looked like it was like a war turned into a prison. But anyway, um, Batista's character and two two guys who are martial artists. One of them I recognize, the other one I don't. And then a, a girl, which is his love interest. Okay. Do you want me to tell you what happens? I mean, I'm not going to watch the movie, but, I, okay. but it's up to you if you want to do the whole plot or just, hey, stay the hell away from this movie or like... I mean, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't waste the time. But basically what happens is, is the guy ends up ca- um, kidnapping... Uh, Sylvester Stallone's love interest. Uh-huh. He kills her while he's on a um, while he's on a walkie-talkie with her. I mean, with him. Oh, okay. So that's like the. Even when I saw that part, I will say like that one, that part, and maybe like two other parts. I was like, oh, because uh-huh. like I was not expecting it at all. Like he was like. They usually like prolong it and like. Yeah, it was like it, 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 it was like it would happen in real life. It's like if you was um if you was mad at somebody and you had him on video cam. Uh-huh. And you was talking to this dude, and you was like, "Look, such and such, um, I got your girl. Guess what? Watch this." And you you put the camera up to her face, and you just slit her throat. Oh, there's nice. no monologue. There's no nothing. It's just watch this cut throat dead. Nice. Right. So that's what she. Be. Huh? He says the way it should be. The way should it be. should be. I'm so I'm like I'm so tired of watching movies where they're like, "We're gonna hold on to her for insurance purposes." No, fucking kill her. Like that's what you would do. So that happened. Obviously, his character, um, Sly's character, gets really upset. Now he's like, okay, I got, I really got to kill this guy. Because initially, it was supposed to be about him uh, rescuing some hostages. Um, Batista's character was... He had kind of a small role. He, he ended up showing up at the end of the movie. 
but he had this gun with these. He had a shotgun that had these shells in it that was called Dragon's Breath. Dragon's yeah. Breath? Yo. They're flaming, mm. flaming shotgun shells. Man. I'm trying to think of... It almost warrants the name that, that, that he gives the shells because... When he shoots somebody, not only does it leave a huge hole, but it looked like it looked like a dragon blew a hole through their chest. Okay, like it's crazy. Like it's, it, it's it's literally a one shot kill type of. Um, but isn't it officially called Dragon's Breath? Or I don't know yes. if it's a real thing or not. Yeah, oh, it's not a real thing. Because he says yes. So so that's a real thing. Okay, so that's scary. So the other okay. yo man, when he was shooting people, it was he's wow. <laughs> Wow, wow. And these jokers was exploding. Like, it wasn't like a, a fake explosion. Like, he, you know, he shoots somebody and then they just explode. Like, they had a bomb attached to him. Uh-huh. It was just like the concussion. I mean, the concussive, the concussiveness of the hit uh-huh. would blow them back. And then when he would walk past people, you would just see this huge hole in their chest. Jeez. Like, you can see to the ground. Oh, nice. Um, then, of course, there was martial arts scenes. Um, with the guys fighting or whatever, but with the art, the martial yeah, artists you've seen before. Yeah. Um, and then I mean, he ends up getting to the guy, beat the crap out of him, throws him off this ledge or whatever, and then that's pretty much the end of the movie. Yeah, that sucks, man. Yeah, I mean it's the third one, and I haven't seen the first. I saw the trailer for. The, I remember the trailer for the first one because it had Arnold Schwarzenegger and Stallone. It's really weird to me because. Both of these movies were low budget, and I'm like, why? Well, is is, then, is this is like chump change for his his kids or his daughters or something? Like, I make a little like low budget movie or whatever I make from that movie, I give to my daughters. Like, I don't understand why he's making these movies for college, dude. You know what I'm saying? For who? For college. For college. Yeah, they paid the college now. Well, that movie, oh. they they should, that daughter is good to go. I don't know, maybe Princeton. Here she comes. Maybe sort of. <laughs> I don't know. And then it's like, I don't know, would you consider Batista an A-list actor? No, I wouldn't. Okay. I mean, nothing, not to offend him in any way. I'm not here to, I'm not trying to get body slammed by him because that shit will hurt a lot. But um, yeah, he's starting his acting career. He did fine. as He's, he's great as Drax. Well, I mean, he's got his own movie now with... Um, yeah, he actually has that, two. No. What's that comedian's name? Kumal? The one? Um... I think he's from Harold and Kumar. He actually has three. Or maybe not. No, no, I think it's somebody no, it's else. Not. He's a stand-up the guy comedian. Harold and Kumar is the Indian guy that's in Ham. In- oh, you're right. You're right. He actually has three leading role movies. Well, the one I know of is the Stuber one, which is the hip. He like uses the guys, the guys Uber as his. Yeah. Whatever. That looks funny. I'm. I'm. That looks. I'm definitely gonna watch that, but not in theaters. And then he has another one where. <clears throat> It's him and um, I don't remember the female actress, but uh, <clears throat> it's him and he's like a CIA agent and something. But the movie is about him interacting with this little girl. That that's fairly recent, I think. And then I saw I just saw interacting with a little girl. Yeah, like in the trailer, he's t- he's like trying to teach. What is he trying to teach her? I forget what he 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 trying to he kind of makes some deal with her because what ends up happening is like him and his partner are doing surveillance on somebody and she ends up walking into the house and and finding out everything that they're doing. Okay. So in order to like keep her mouth closed, he pretty much bribes her like if you do if you don't say anything, then I'll do blah 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 for you or whatever. And I forget exactly what he asks us to um what he what he says he'll do for her. But it's like some part where like it's him and her standing face to face and he's like telling her something about interrogation or whatever. And he has to um he tells her that she has to pretty much get past him. So it's like a a fish bowl with a fish in it on the table. And she just knocks the she just knocks the bowl over it and it, and it hits the ground and the fish is like dying and he like falls on the ground and tries to save it or whatever so that Oh, okay. I know what movie you're talking about now. So, that makes sense. So it's that movie. It's his kid. No, that's not his kid. Mm-hmm. I could have sworn that was... Someone else's kid. No, oh, okay. somebody else's kid. Okay. Then my, I thought 
the trailer I, I'm remembering that that was just, I remember I don't be talking but they're like talking to each other yeah. and then she's outside the door and it's like I can hear you and whatever I I've seen it yeah. the, I've seen the trailer for that I forgot what that one's called yeah so yeah it is too Stuber and that one I don't and know what the third the, one is the other movie is I saw um when I was looking through the list or whatever I forget what it's called but it has something to do with a stadium that's all I can remember with a with a stadium yeah. Oh. Like somebody takes over a stadium, holds, holds people hostage in the stadium or whatever, and he has to come and address the issue. I don't know. I, I just read a little bit of it. Okay. There's Orton in the chat to asking, who do I really think killed John Bennett Ramsey? <laughs> I don't know who that is. Sorry. I'm going to look it up. How do you not know who John uh, Ramsey is? I don't know who that is. John Benet, sorry. That's two words. He spelled it with, with a space. John Benet. Pedophile confesses to killing John Benet Ramsey in letters to friend. It's alright. You don't have to apologize for it. So yeah, I, I think someone confessed to it. So this year. I mean, if you're saying that he's, they're, they're lying, I have no idea. This is the first time I've heard of this case. How old was she when she was killed? 37. Mm. It was in 1996. Cause of death, asphyxia, by strangulation. Died in, yeah, December 25th. It was born, oh, she was only six years old, Jesus. Shit. Listen to what is it, a crime junkie. There's a bunch of those little, those type of stories with young people getting killed. Oh, man. Can we do an entire podcast on the Zodiac Killer? I don't think we can fill up <laughs> an entire podcast with the Zodiac Killer. You might not be able to. Oh, okay. Well, I can, I can host and ask you guys questions. Randall, what do you think of the, the Zodiac Killer? I know nothing about it. All right. Zodiac <laughs> killer. Yo, someone is messing with their mic. Brian. Yeah. Thank you. Is the pseudonym of the unidentified serial killer who operated in North California from the from at least the late nineteen sixties to the early nineteen seventies. The killer's identity remains unknown. The Zodiac murdered victims in Benicia Vallego? Lake, that, that, all these places. Holy shit. How many? Did he, five confirmed dead, two injured, possibly 20 to 28 total dead. Holy hell. Span of crimes was from the 60s to the 70s. That is crazy. Dead bodies and block parties. You're crazy. I mean, unless we like go through the timeline and just tell you what happened to Zodiac, but my take on it, I don't know. That happened in the 60s and 70s, dude. You could do one on Jeffrey Dahmer. Like. Isn't that the one that was eating people? Yep. Cooking them, Randall. <laughs> Sounds like Zordon wants a true crime uh, podcast. I can only recommend one. And that's Crime Junkie Podcast. Um, Wait a minute, was it? What? Somebody played um, played Jeffrey Dahmer in the movie. Was I think Christian it was called Bale? Dahmer. It was who? Was it Christian Bale? No, that's American Psycho. Uh... I think the name of the movie was it was called Dahmer, wasn't it? Was it Matt Damon? Uh, maybe. Oh, there's one. Da, 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 da. I can't remember what it was. Was it called Zombie? Zombie? No. There's a movie just called Dahmer that came out in 2002. Film. Yeah. And who who's in it? Jeremy oh, Renner. Man. Yeah, it was yeah. Jeremy Renner. That's what it was. Speaking of Jeremy Renner. He has a single out. Yeah, and I heard it. What, singing? Yeah, he sings. 
What? Yeah, it's, it's not on the list, madness. Anthony. It's, it's not, not on the list. list. It's not, but it's because it, 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 we were. It was me and Janiana and we were eating McDonald's, getting in, getting our nuggets, and then I was going through Spotify to see what uh. <laughs> I'm dumb, and I heard Runner's single. What the hell is it called? It's like Heaven is Heaven. In... Heaven doesn't have a name or something. Yeah, and it's not a bad song. Like, oh, it's, it's a... just one song. It's one song, yeah, but it's a decent track. It's because we were scrolling and I saw the cover art. And I'm like, is that Jeremy Renner? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. It says and then on the cover, it says Jeremy Renner. And I listen to it. It's not so bad. It's not bad. How does he? Does he sound like a country singer? Sort of, yeah. That's all I imagine. He sounds pretty. I mean, for for what it, for the the flank he just hit did on this position just now, Randall. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was it was fine. Like I'm like, okay, he he definitely has. A, he can he can make it. <laughs> Oh man. As Orton says, if you want a really disturbing crime story turned into a movie, see this. It's called Snowtown. Okay. I don't want that stuff swimming around in my head, man. Oh, then you <laughs> then you definitely can't listen to the podcast to the podcast thing. So yeah, I guess the render single. It was it was decent. It was like a mix of his country sounding vocals with Rock and a bit of like it's not EDM, but it's a bit of electronic in it too. It sounds pretty good. The course was he he did an, an all right job with it. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing other stuff from him. I guess I can leave it at that. But that shit blew that hit me from like less uh, left west field, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's more left, Brian. That's why I said it. It's double left. Jesus. Uh huh. Um. Uh, ba 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 And that's that's I did consume that. Oh, and wow, I'm so stupid. I also consumed Julia Michaels' uh, e, uh, EP. It's the second part. It's called Fuck. It's not called Fuck. I'm sorry. Give me a minute. It might be. It's not. Price says I'm slacking on. My own doc, and I heard Julia. <laughs> I didn't listen to Lil Nas X. I saw it on there, and I'm like, should I? I didn't either. It's apparently good. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it. It's called Inner Monologue it, Part 2 for Julia Michaels' album. And there was like two songs on there that, that I, I enjoyed, that I really liked and added to the library. The rest is actually pretty good. She definitely has a... Her writing's very modern. Like, if you're talking to a talking to a person nowadays not like with emojis and shit but like pretty decent dialogue not dialogue wow well it's not a movie De- decent writing uh most of it's relationships for like I, all of it is so relationship songs uh they're not like sl- not all of them are like slow and s- some of them are sappy it's... but all in all it's really good for an ep anyway oh i guess it's not an ep it's an album well that's what spotify says but yeah, uh, Hurt Again, Shouldn't Have Said It. Even like, Falling for Boys was good. Work Too Much was good. I guess the one I didn't kill that, care that much about was Fucked Up Kinda. But yeah, those two things. That's what I listened to. I'm sure something else will come up. Brian's already ready. Yeah, hit me with the tab. You have to tab that top one, Brian. There you go. Brian. Speaking in uh, of music, talking about Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib on Bandana. I liked it. <clears throat> the hell was that? I liked it. You tell um, me what the hell that was. <laughs> that that was smoke or that smoking, apparently. <laughs> it uh, it sounds like it's an homage to the '90s sample-based soul hip hop uh, albums. Because I think I believe Madlib produced it, and he still uses outdated gear to get that kind of vinyl kind of sound in his instrumentals. I don't think there's one song, instrumental-wise, I didn't like. All of it was good in that department. Um, he has weird interludes, but in in like the end of the songs or somewhere in the middle, and it's usually an Asian man, what? like with a heavy accent, just saying the N word. What? But with an A instead of an R. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was, just, it was pretty funny. Um, there's only one song I hated, and that was, I think, Half Man, Half Cocaine. 
everything else yeah it just sounded really good it's basically um what type of instrumentals is it it's like soul bass 90s hip-hop instrumentals for the most part Ooh, okay the features i think everybody that was featured in this album did a good job who's in it all right so in order from appearance from top to bottom push a t killer mike that's that's my favorite song palm olive uh okay. anderson pack yasin bay aka most deaf most black Def's dots in it. it oh nice and that's it it's 15 it's 14 songs in a in an intro that's just the asian guy like i mentioned i end up liking at least nine of them no oh, shit and okay. the ones that didn't were all right it's just one song i didn't like i recommend it solid okay. if you're into that kind of sound the song fake names i have a complaint and that's one of my favorite songs of the album so you know how there's songs that switch into another song about halfway? Yeah. He he starts it a certain way with a certain instrumental, and I really like that because it reminds me of the way Slick Rick would tell stories in his songs. Okay. Then after a verse, I think the chorus once, it just abruptly cuts to another instrumental and another theme of the song, which I like both parts. I just wish they were separate songs and then they were longer. Mm, I see what you mean. It but doesn't, it doesn't, really it doesn't mesh the same way Nights does. No. It, it's just it's hard abrupt. cut. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that. But I liked both. Uh, I liked both instrumentals. I liked both both song ideas. I, yeah. I recommend this if you like hip hop or if you just like it. Basically, lo fi, lo fi hip hop, but current day. Ooh. Okay. You're selling me on the instrumentals. See, I don't. I don't. I don't really know much about Freddie Gibbs or Madlib, so I'm not educated. Zordon in the chats wants to know. If we're gonna talk about NBA at any point, like uh, the off-season moves, like Durant and Kyrie going to the Nets, I don't know if you guys are following NBA at all. All I know is that Kawhi Leonard doesn't know if he's gonna leave uh, Toronto. That's all I know about NBA. He apparently might go to the <laughs> Lakers. Maybe. You don't like that? You think that's a wrong answer, Randall, or what? What? Him going to Lakers? No, I'm fine with that. Oh, what, what's your what's your NBA team? Lakers. Oh, then that then you're just get, okay. You're you're definitely okay with it. What do you think about the Kyrie? Uh, Zordon say <laughs> I think Zordon's upset. He's a Lakers fan. Randall is evil. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> how they flip on you so quickly. Yes. Man. Oh man. I don't. Yeah, I don't watch NBA at all, so I, I don't have a team or anything. But if there's like a game on, or I'm like someone else's house watching a game or at the bar or something, cool. Last game I completely watched on purpose was Kobe's last game. So, mm. what about you, Kelsey? You follow NBA at all, or? I uh, I haven't really been. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the same boat here. I don't really follow it. All I know is the Kawhi Leonard stuff because they won the the championship, and then everyone's wondering where the hell he's gonna be at. So it's all those headlines are invading my my tech stuff somehow. I don't know why. Uh, uh, I'll be back in just a sec. No problem. That was the last time we heard from him. Randall, you want? Can you dunk the basketball? I don't know if I can now. Nah, I used to. I used to be able to. Yeah, when I was like lighter. Okay. So the answer to your question is yes, he can. Could yes, I could. Yo, you can. You already did it. That means you can do it because you did it before. Randall's a white man confirmed. You don't feel like a white man. Talk about it, Randall. I don't get it. America, society, tell them how it is. I don't get it. Ooh. I don't get it. Lakers that. fan can't dunk, and he said you're white. Oh. Wait, so I if you're a Lakers I'm... fan and you can dunk, you're black. But what if you're not a Lakers fan and you can dunk? I'm white too, by his definition of white, I guess. That goes the through drumming. the mic, Randall. Oh, that was loud? Was it not loud? Really. It's not loud. Not it's really. just like that goes through, you know? You don't make drum beats while you're doing a talking podcast, Randall. Unless you're trying to, you're trying to make do a gig. I can get some, like, fake drums. I can make get a fake guitar. We can rock band this thing. If you'd I like. Rock you telling me? I fucking, yeah. I, I miss Rock Band 2. I thought Rock Band 4 was going to be great. And then they shot the they're bed. St- they're still releasing songs for Rock Band 4. Good for them. Like, they they took out the keyboard and, and then mm-hmm. fucking I didn't keep all my songs because of licensing things. They fucked up. Well, I mean, I know why they took out the keyboard. It's because, you know, we finally bought a keyboard and I was like, I'm going to main this, I think. 
And in the next game, boom, no more keyboard. That's crazy. And that's the story of your life. Mm-hmm. He still says I'm culturally black, but I'm in Philly. What does Philly well, have to Philly's, do with anyway? Philly's a black uh Philadelphia's a black uh state in that country, idiot. Can you imagine if like some weird shit happened in the US and like all the states broke off and now they're all their own separate countries? I'm leaving. Do you Florida. realize how many that would be? Yeah, over Randall. I know there's fifty states. Fifty two. Wow. So yeah, that, that, what does that to do with that's what? war, man. That's like unnecessary war. Why? Well, how's it war? It's just hey, we're not. Do you doing know how it? many beefs there are just be, just because you're from a certain area? Okay, we're not talking about country. We're talking about like if you just go from one city to the next, uh -huh. there's a problem. I understand I'm that. that what does it do? What does that have to do with anything I'm saying? Because if you're talking about it, break you said each state breaking off to be a different country, right? Yeah. Then that gives them more reason to fight. Why is that? What do you mean? Because it would escalate. Because now it's not just a city; now it's a country, and you know how like patriotic people get. Oh, you from North? Where? I'm from East Orange. What's up? Like, it would be bad. I think at least I think it would be bad. East Orange. I don't That's think not a state. I, East Orange is not a like, state. I think he's saying it as an example. Yeah, but, but I don't think Europe already does it. Huh? Europe is full of how many? How many countries? I don't know about what goes on in Europe. So. Oh, okay. Oh, Zorn says that would never happen. Nukes prevent that from ever happening. States will never be allowed to break off ever if it was possible after the Civil War. But with nukes, there's zero possibility. Also, Randall is hundred percent correct as well. I doubt, like, maybe at first, but that's what we have. I guess it depends definitely... on where you're at. And that's I don't too, think like... it's going to be because, I mean, it's not random citizens being in control of Massachusetts. They're, gonna, they're not going to bomb New York because they hate the Yankees. Just people. <laughs> hey, man, I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, Yankee, I'm a Yankees fan, and I'm not as hardcore as some Yankee fans I know, but you just think about it. How people get over, over fights over a game. Like, I've seen so many fights at a game. Because somebody is a fan of of, of the uh, opposing team, but that's like that's like low level stuff. That stuff happens everywhere, Randall. You but, know, how, you know the, how crazy the thing is. It happens all the time. It happens all the time in soccer. You know how how many people love watching FIFA and they're in those stadiums doing the same thing that we do when we watch baseball. So okay, so now. You, but do you see them blowing each other up. Well, no, but saying? that's what I'm saying. It will escalate. So now, not only are you representing another team, which is usually a lot of people represent where they're from, which city they're from. Right. Okay. So not only uh, is it a beef between teams, now it's like, oh, you from this state too, which is now a country. Now the the fight has gotten even higher because now the yeah, sticks are higher. But Tim from Duffy's isn't gonna run the whole state of Massachusetts. I'm just saying, like, how just think about how quickly things escalate. I'm not saying that it's it's organized. I'm just saying, like, all it takes is a group of people or one person to escalate the issue. And then another person comes, and then that person got to back that person up. Next thing you know, it's like an all-out fight. I mean, you've seen it at, at college games, high school games. The thing, I'm, the thing that that doesn't doesn't that happens already. That happens all over the world, and they have different countries next to each other. I know, but, the, but I don't understand how it would be different if that because here. now you represent in a, an entire state as a country. Before it's like. If you have beef with somebody, it's just you and your boys. Now it's like, the best way I could explain it is, you know how in movies when someone's in New York and there's a villain, and, <laughs> and they talk about how like New York is not going to allow the villain to do whatever it is he's doing. How did New York people from New York usually band together? It's like that kind of com camaraderie, like between if someone is from a certain area and you have a group of people that are loyal to that area, it doesn't matter if they're friends or not. Like, the fact that they're from the same area, they're going to, like, band together. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm, I'm just saying, like, people aren't... I don't want to say that. I'm just going to say that people people can be very emotional, and things can go from zero to 100 
really quickly. I just, but that okay. <clears throat> We're just gonna be talking in circles. That already happens. You don't think place. that it would? I know. It I don't think happens. here it would. You don't not, think it would escalate? Not any more than it already does. But I mean, uh, what do I know? I'm, I don't run states or countries. The hell. Those are, uh, hey, that's just me. Zordon says, uh, "Can, what do you think of James Dolan?" Who is it? Okay, thank God, because I'm like, I don't know who the fuck James Dolan is either. And Kelsey had to leave, so that's why he's out now. Okay, two things came up. A basketball player and a white dude with a goatee. The the businessman or... Oh, wait. They're they're related. (laughs) He's the CEO of the Madison Square Garden Company and chairman of the MSG Networks. (sighs) Oh... I don't since you didn't know him. I guess you don't have a, you don't think anything about him then. Sports management, sports management. Oh, he managed the Knicks for a bit, the Rangers, the New York Liberty. Is that was that WNBA? Okay. Huh. Oh, he wanted to know how are you from New York and support the Lakers. My uncle. My uncle's a Lakers fan. Oh, and okay. when I was very, very little, I'm talking about like five, six five, years two. old. This dude. <laughs> when I was like maybe five or six years old, he uh, he was like, we're going to be Lakers fan. Well, he was already a Lakers fan, obviously, but he was like, we're going to cheer for the um, Lakers. And ever since then, I was a Lakers fan. Okay. And it, that's how I got my football game. I'm a football game. My football team, too. Like, my uncle is a Dallas Cowboys fan. Uh-huh. So if you're all over the place, you east side, west side, and south. But no, I'm not a I'm not a Cowboys fan. He's, he's a fan. he's a Cowboys fan. Uh-huh. But the right number one rivals between um for Dallas is the Redskins. Oh. So he so, hated you at that point. No, it was it was just like it was I think it was when I got older and I knew he was a Dallas Cowboys fan and we used to watch football all the time together. Okay. So I would just pick the opposing team. Oh, uh-huh. And I ended up picking the Redskins one time, and I noticed how like riled up he got. Not just him, but just I I, f- I found out that these teams were rivals. Uh huh. So that gave me more reason to be a Redskins fan. Uh huh. So it, it started out when I was little, so I just stuck with it, and then I actually started, you know, looking into the players and stuff like that, and then I I was actually a, a Redskins fan because then at that point. I like the team for me, not just because I wanted to rival against my uncle. So was there a chance you were going to be a Mets fan? Never. Or a Red Sox fan? Never. Because if he liked the Yankees, did your uncle like the Yankees? Yeah, we're both Yankees fans. Okay, so I was, by that logic, or that by that timeline. Him and I have both had the same teams, except for football. Hockey. Yeah, I think hockey too, because I like the Penguins and he likes the uh, the Knights. I mean the Kings. Mm. Man, you guys could be making all these team names up. I'd be like, all right, yeah, that sounds right. I'm more of a Gopher fan, so I like stairwells. Okay. Don't forget about pizza shoes, dude. Oh God, Randall. Oh, I think that's it, right? Yeah, Kelsey had the car to. He was gonna talk. He was gonna talk about his car, but he had to go. He had to leave. Something came up. Uh, so yeah, we don't have much news besides the Rainbow Six added a new mode, like a three versus three cowboy mode, and it looks cool. Yeah, you can only, you can only use like a revolvers. yeah, like a revolver and the biscuit, and it seems like it's still like a round based. It's not deathmatch, right? It's like a round based um, I think thing. there's an objective with involving gold, but I'm not sure. The only bit I've seen is just the, the rounds ended via biscuits. Gotcha. Which is probably what's going to happen. It's in the new map, right? Like a western ass map. It's a map just for the event, yeah. Fort Trust? Fort Truth? Something like that? Got it. It looks cool. I saw like a small gif of what was happening. It didn't seem like I felt like McCree there, but maybe. You never know. Uh, so yeah, since we don't have much to talk about this week, we just decided to go through. I looked. I looked up a bunch of moral slash ethical 
questions, dilemmas that we can ask each other? I forgot to ask Joe that question. What question? The one we was talking about last night about the expo. Wow, you must be getting old, bro. You no, but we know. talked about two. We we talked about a lot of stuff. There was only one expo. Yeah, but we talked about a lot of stuff about an expo. No, I was just going to ask him if he would go. Oh, okay. I'm like, who wouldn't? Brian, would you go to an adult video expo? It's basically porn expo. Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay. Because we're going to ask, gonna, what do you it's think? It's not going to be like, as soon as I get there, someone's going to put a ball gag in my mouth. And okay, animals. man. Why you gotta, Why does he have it's, to go that far? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go and look at things. He could have just been like, something crude. He... What do you mean something crude? I don't know what that means. Brian, what's crude? What like, he just uh, said. Like something brash. Yeah. Oh my God. That was your way of saying like, oh, you walk in and a dick's in your mouth or something. Some, you know what crash means, right? I, all right. So it, it went way over both of you. That was me telling Brian, what's crude? And then he gives me an example of, of a crude thing like the ball, like you walk in and balls are in your mouth or something. That's crude. Yeah. Like when you walk in and there's two boys already sucking you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like that. That's what, I'm, that's what I wanted to have. <laughs> Why? Because that would have been funny, but you guys both just, oh, let's, I think doesn't know what the word crude is. I don't know. I mean, that's fair. I might not know it, but. All right, hold on. Before we continue with the the expo, Zorn's asking, what do we think of, or I guess it's me, what do I think of Sia, the artist? I love Sia. She has a lot of cool songs I like. She's a good, great pop artist, so I'm definitely down with Sia. Man, I've been saying her name wrong this whole time. What is it? I thought it was Sia. I don't. Hey, I'm. I'm. No, it's, it's Sia. It's Sia. Okay, I I no, read it how I you know. I've been saying two names wrong. Ariana Grande is actually Ar- Ariana Grande, and Zendaya is actually Zendaya. What are you doing, Randall? Because I was saying it. I was saying Zendaya this entire time, and you kept correcting me, telling me it was Zendaya. And now, my man says I was right. It is Zendaya. Oh, okay. Well, then if I did say, I don't remember saying it was the other one, but okay. By the way, I really like her. She's really pretty. Okay. Every time I see her, I'm just like, why aren't you and Tom Holland together yet? Oh. They probably will be after this movie. I hope so. Mm, I don't know about that. What are my top three favorite Sia songs? Uh, Cheap Thrills. Damn, what's the one... I don't know one of them because of the music video I liked. It's the one with the little girls like running through like an insane asylum. Fuck. Is it the greatest? No. I don't know. Never give up. Uh, definitely uh, cheap thrills. Elastic cart. When it's featuring The weekend, not just by herself. I don't know why she released a version of it just by herself. And I like Chandelier, too. But what is the one I... What is... Never give up. I it's... just said it a lot. I don't know oh, is that what it's... it is? Sorry. I don't know. It's from the Lion King sound... From the Lion soundtrack. No, it's not that. Is it Move Your Bot? Damn it. I don't know, what... I don't know which one it is. Just not chandelier. And, no, because chandelier thing is just that one chick. Yeah, it's not that one. It's Maybe like a girl with a wig, and and like a by the end it's like a bunch of girls in this like place, and they do like the choreography is cool. Oh, so I guess my three. Girl. I don't. I don't know that the, the, that that song. So the three would be. Dude, I didn't know they had a version of Elastic Heart with the weekend. That was the original version. It was for the Hunger Games soundtrack, the second movie. I think it was. It was that, yeah. It was from that soundtrack. It was Sia versus featuring the weekend, and then I think she released her, the track with just herself. Uh, so yeah, Elastic Heart, Cheap Thrills, and Chandelier. I guess would be my top three because I'm forgetting the name of the other track. I keep thinking there's an arcade stick next to Randall. Like his hand is on it. I don't know why. He's actually practicing his cell. What looks like the arcade stick? No, next to your left hand. Like it looks like in my head because there's stuff both in front of it. So it looked like those are the buttons, and you're just like this, like just resting it. You talking about these and just like prints on the table? These prints? They look like they're yeah. 
This is dope. Oh, never mind. He screwed up the second verse. The original is better. Oof. But the hot takes. I can. I it's think the other. Way. I think the other way. <laughs> I think he improved the second uh, verse. But hey, I'm a fanboy, so I can't really. You can't take mine for as an unbiased opinion. Um. What the hell were we talking about before the uh, CS stuff? You're about to start. Oh, the yeah. expo. That's what it was. Why did we come back to it? Because you brought it up, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, it was like a passing by. It wasn't even a, a conversation. It was more like a statement, like, mm, and then that's it. There's no need to circle around back to it. Okay. He's asked, okay, Zordon. Zordon's got these quick fire ass questions. I don't know why he doesn't just go to topicsideallarplays.com and ask. But anyway, what do you think of uh, CTE and how can we fund medical research to prevent it? Fam, that sentence doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know what any of that means. I think uh, you gotta keep in mind, Jackal I'm like, has a gun called the CTE in Rainbow Six Siege, so I think it's a good gun. Uh, has a little bit of recoil, but it does good damage. Shoots fast enough. Yeah, I don't know what that, any of that is, man. I'm sorry. I'm not really well informed other than tech stuff because everything else is really... Oh, it's Alzheimer's dementia. What is dementia? Chronic Trump. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Encephalopathy, yeah. Jesus. So what is this? Uh -huh. Caused by repeated head injuries. Is a brain condition associated with repeated blows to the head? Oh fuck! Who's Isn't getting... that what like football players get? Basically, yeah, he just, as soon as you said that, he typed it in there. Basically, football players, wrestlers, and a bunch of people involved in physical activity are found to have the brain of an 80-year-old, 80, 80-90-year-old. Yo, man. That reminds me of that movie, Concussion. I haven't seen it. That's the Will Smith one, right? Yeah. Like, it was crazy. If it's, I heard it's based on a true story. Like, the information that's in the movie is what actually happens to some football players. And then I don't know if this, if this, if it happens to this extreme, but it was one um, football player. He was pulling his teeth out and gluing them back in. Jesus, Zordon says that concussion is based on the guy who found yeah, CTE. So I guess, so there is probably medical truth to whatever you saw in that movie, like facts. Uh. Possible signs include memory loss, confusion, personality changes, erratic behavior, problems paying attention, and organizing thoughts, and difficulty with balance and motor skills. Jeez. That's why one of the reasons they um, they made it illegal to do head helmet to helmet contact. I mean that makes sense if this if it if this is what causes what it's if that's what causes this type of a injury. Like fuck. Yeah, if, if people need to support whatever they need, like I don't, is it something like, like a charity or something, or is it like what? Is, what did you ask me earlier? Hold on. What do you think about it? Oh, what do I think about CTE? It's bad. Like. And how can you fund research to prevent it? Yeah, the Just WWE and NFL need federal investigations. Honestly. Well, yeah. Also, find a way to actually perform the sport. Safely, well, football you know? is never going to go away. So. Yeah, unfortunately, both of those things. Well, I don't know about WWE, but NFL is a is a money pit so damn deep. There's no way they in hell own, it's happening. They own. They literally own one day of the week. Yeah. Like every Sunday, what is it? Sunday or Monday? It's Sunday. It's like everyone. Every, there's so many people watching football. When the freaking everyone who says, "Oh, I hate the Super," I hate the Super Bowl, and they come back with numbers out outrageous numbers of people watching it. So if you hate it so much, why is people people still watching? The commercials or the commercial? Yeah, like NFL was found multiple times to keep players playing with concussions and concussion symptoms. Shit, at a minimum, rest of players who are hurt. Yeah, but I'm sure they'll 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 wiggle their way around it. Like they, like you said, they've been found multiple times doing it. What happened what, as a result? Did they get like a slap on the hand, or like I'm not really informed in this, so but that's why I'm actually asking. When it comes, when there's money on the line, man, people will 
Look the other way, man. Peyton Manning has such a bad nerve damage, he can't tie his own shoelaces anymore. What? That's a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't even know that Peyton Manning was that messed up. Peyton Manning. He's a quarterback for the Colts. Well, he's retired now, but he was a quarterback for the Colts. His brother's Eli, right? He used to be yeah. with the Giants? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I get which one's which. Which one's the older one? Peyton is the older one. Oh yeah, he begins with quote. He begins with his cleat. This is from Von, like, Kevin Von Valkenberg published a ter terrific uh, story about the 39-year-old quarterback today over at the e uh, ESPN. He says, quote, he begins with his cleats, which he can barely untie without assistance. A Broncos equipment staffer helps peel them off his feet while he does a radio in while he does a radio interview, because after nearly 25 years of football dating back to high school, it's a relief to not have to bend over that far. Next comes his shoulder pads, which, when yanked over his head, generate a groan that is a mixture of suffering and sweet relief. Manning's pale arms and torso are covered in fresh scrapes and old bruises, bruises sorry, some the color of strawberries, others the shade of eggplant. End quote. Oh, there's still more. I'm sorry. Quote, his socks come off after several violent tugs, revealing toes that are twisted and bent into obtuse angles. What the fuck? I mean that the up to, what the fuck sorry is not part of what he said. That was that was, <laughs> that was me. Uh, when he removes a thick blue Don Joy knee brace from his stiff left leg, he he twice pauses to grimace and and gather himself before stripping it off and handing it to a staffer for safekeeping. End quote. That is ridiculous. Obtuse Yo. angles, fam. Remember when I told you about my mom didn't want me to play football? Well, she saved you, dude. Because, yo, this is one dude. Yeah. And I haven't seen that concussion. And he's he's a quarterback. You can only imagine the lineman. So he doesn't... I mean, if he has a good line, he doesn't get hit very often. But that lineman's suffering. The line is suffering. Yeah. That's every... Every every so hut, they're, they're crashing. Yeah, I would think the line... The, Offensive line and the defensive line, them jokers must be really messed up. Zordon said, it's crazy. I've talked to a doctor recently who said, don't count on the feeling coming back. It was hard for me for about two years because one doctor told me I could wake up any morning and it might come back. So you wake up everything, every day thinking today's the day, then it's not. End quote. That was a Peyton Manning quote. Hmm. He just start with the, he didn't start with the quote, but he ended with a quote. I had then, no idea that he had it that bad, man. That's fucked up. Shit, those are kind of things where I'm like, man, thank God I was a stupid nerd and didn't want to do any sports. I guess not all sports are that dangerous then. Golf is a non I guess that's a peaceful uh, contact. Sport. Yeah, it's a non contact sport. I mean, basketball isn't bad either. I mean, you, that's true. You might risk the occasional gouge in the eyeball or. Or just like hitting the nose or something yeah. with an elbow, but I don't think it's. Usually what happens with basketball is your knees give out because of constantly running up and down the um, wood floor. Even though wood gives, it's still, it's still a lot on your knees. <clears throat> or the, uh, you know, you tear ACLs on landing, stuff like that. Wait, Zordon, you're saying that's 90% of the NFL players? What Do you have an article or something to back that? I would not be surprised. 90% of you know the know players? The, you know the 10% that, that's not affected are probably the kickers. Oh, wow. You Actually, no, now that you say that, you're, you might be right then. Because those are the people who like, just go are just out there for the kick, right? They don't, yeah. they don't play any other position? No. They kick field goals and punt the ball. That's it. Yeah, I mean, they've gone, they've gone on for how long? Quote, found that among 111 brains from NFL players donated to a brain bank created to study... Oh, I'm sorry. Did I read it? Donated to a brain bank created to study the long-term effects of repetitive head trauma, 110 had CTE. End quote. Holy hell. Yeah, he's got it from 538.com and J Jamate, jamanetwork.com. Which is the actual study itself? That's crazy, dude. So, yo, if you, you need your, to watch that movie, man, I probably didn't end up watching it. Then concussion with uh, Willie Smith. 
What was I going to say? He talks about the difference between um, animals who do that, like rams and um, wood, woodpecker, who like do the impact stuff or whatever. All right, Randall, that's the one thing you shouldn't have done. What? It's make that. Don't worry, just keep going. Anyway, um, I can I think it was the woodpecker. Like its tongue goes down its throat and wraps around its head or something like that, and it it, it absorbs the impact. Which makes it safe for it to do that. Oh, okay. But it's, he was he was the his argument to the NFL was like human beings are the only um, living creatures that don't have a um, something in place in our in our anatomy that allows us to absorb an impact to the to the head. So then what? So what would we be? I guess I don't want an actual definitive answer because we're not scientists. Well. How can we fix it for the NFL? Because yeah, I guess a, a the only solution thing, is yeah, it's support the, the medical research for CTE. But if we can have a the only thing they equipment done, that you can bump into things, but it'll absorb shock or absorb something. Two hand the, touch. The only thing they've okay. done <laughs> is uh, they made it illegal that you can't do helmet to helmet contact. That's the only thing that I'm aware of that they've done. I mean, they have they they come out with new helmets, but I don't. T- I personally don't know how much better they are than the old helmets. Yeah, like the, I would imagine that by this, by this point, there'd be some sort of absorbent, like shock absorbent or force, something that'll bounce some of the force back. If that makes sense. Yeah. So they would just like, well, like that's a loud noise. I'm sorry. It would like not. But see, the problem is, is bounce. that when you have transfer of energy, it usually goes from the, from what's being hit back to what's like. If if I'm hitting you and you are um, absorbing a hit. If it's supposed to repel, it usually is supposed to go back to me. Yeah. But if you don't have something to absorb it, and a helmet can't absorb an impact. But I'm not saying not the helmet itself. It could be something underneath that can, and it'll push away a bit. I don't. I, I'm not a uh, engineer, uh, a hard like a engineer in this way, but like. I'm just saying, you know? like, if you had something that worked like that, when I hit you, you guys would just bounce away away from each other. But the force would go back to you, which means you would get. I would get hit again. But if there's both absorbed, it just you push each other away. Like a magnet. Yeah. I don't know. Again, I have no idea. Well, Zordon's asking stuff. One of the biggest problems is that WWE makes its employees independent contractors. Oh, that's also true. I know about that. I saw um the recent movie with what's her name, Paige. F is for Ellen family. Page. No. Oh, not Ellen Page. I don't know what yeah, no, I got you. Though. Look at the name of it. I think it's F. F is for family. I think. No. Fighting with my family. Fighting with my family. Yeah. Why I think F is for family? That might be something else. Fighting with my family. Oh, yeah. I saw that, and you you learn a little bit of how getting into the WWE works. Uh, I think the government should trust trust bus WWE. What is trust bus? And sue them to force them to classify their employees as actual employees. So, I agree with that. Actually, empo- actual, actually, people have suggested graphene helmets, which is an interesting suggestion. I think the government should initiate a medical review at the very least. What is what are their medical benefits? Or, not, or I guess not the medical, the physical, the the benefits of using graphene helmets over what we have now. Does it absorb more? Does it more force or some shit? Or does it make it? No, it wouldn't make it flexible because at that point you'd be hitting yourself without anything, without any, without any production. Supposedly, yes. Okay. See, that's a move that we should be doing too. On top of being able to... I don't they know. need to make the helmets out of vibranium. Okay, Randall, it doesn't exist yet. We haven't dug in Wakanda yet to find it, all right? What are tennis balls made out of? I have... I would assume idea. rubber and cotton. They're made of hollow rubber, uh, of a hollow rubber core covered in a wool or nylon shell, which is known as the nap. Pressurized air inside the rubber core makes the ball bounce. Balls which haven't got enough pressure inside make a thud when they hit the floor. These call these are all these are called dead balls. Pretty much the same thing as a basketball without the nylon. Mm-hmm. Line that within the inside of the helmet. Because it's a rubber, the elasticity of it might be able to dampen the. From when the helmet would hit their head. The mm. thing about it, though, is like the 
the window is like it's it's so small between your skull and the helmet because yeah. the helmet sits right on your head. And there's a small and there's a little and there's only a, a small space between your skull yeah. and your brain. Yeah. So Oh, that was that was the thing that blew my mind. Like I found out years ago. I used to hear the word all the time, concussion, 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 concussion. Yeah. And I never knew exact I just knew it it was it had something to do with your head. I'm not being funny, but do you know exactly what a concussion is? No. It mm. literally is when your brain touches your skull. Ooh. That's all it is. It's when your brain touches your skull. And I'm sure that's because of some blunt force or something that's yeah. pushed your skull in or your brain somehow forward because from behind it gets the hit or some shit. Yeah. Jeez. So we're now post... Uh, quote, a graphing coating that allows better dist- distribution of impact force makes the helmet less susceptible to damage compared to helmets without graphene, even in high temperature conditions, end quote. Not a scientific journal and and likely not applicable to the NFL, but still. I mean, they should be trying something. They should have an R&D. I'm, I'm not saying they don't, but maybe the NFL has does have an R&D department or whoever makes the helmets for them. Like, Especially, how, how old is the NFL? What Super Bowl did we just pass? I honestly can't remember. Like, it's like, what, over 50 years old? How old is I was going to say 40, but I'm, I'm probably wrong. Well, it's from the 1920. Yeah. And you tell by now we haven't... Well, I mean, they did improve from pigskin helmets to... <laughs> and that's true. That's true. And that's true. That's true. And that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> when was the first fucking Super Bowl, I guess? Wasn't it yesterday? Yeah. Or I mean the earliest. I'm sorry. Why did I say it's the most recent? I don't know what I this think it was with Green Bay. Is that what it is? Because I, I, I think the coach was uh, Vince Lombardi, which I, I'm I'm almost sure he's the coach. He was the coach of the Green Bay Packers. Oh, I guess so. Because look, there's the team with the most NFL championships is the Green Bay Packers with. 13, with 13, uh-huh. nine NFL titles before the Super Bowl era, and then four Super Bowl championships afterwards. So they've won nine times before Super Bowl was a thing. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, we'll do four more, fam. Do you think stem cells uh, could eventually restore brain function? From what I've been thrown, information thrown at me from stem cells, stem cells are the cure to everything. Like I've I've heard stem cells can fix so many things in. I I've heard that it can regenerate, but I don't know how much. Like, I I think it's more like skin, but I don't know if it can grow back bone. Yeah, stem cells are cells with the potential to develop into many different types of cells in the body. They serve as a repair system for the body. There are two main types of stem cells: embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. Like, if it's used to replicate cells in your body that are damaged and broken, why not? Is there any... Con- is there... Well, I guess, what are the, what are the, the negatives? Like, what, what are the side effects? Are there side effects? Turn into a zombie. Yeah, like, is that something that I need to look at? Side effects. Stem cell side effects. Okay, there is definitely side effects. Stem cell transplants. Did oh, I just say infection? Give me a sec. We're on cancer.org for people who want to look up with us, I guess. Oh, yep. Stem cell transplant side effects. Problems soon after transplant. Mouth and throat pain. Nausea, vomiting, infection. I mean, there's, well, there's a, the infection has a lot of paragraphs. I'm not going to read through all of that. So it doesn't mean like, you, I'm not saying you just get an infection by doing the uh, transplant, but bleeding and transfusions. What is this? Inter... Just say lung problems. <laughs> interstitial, I think it's interstitial. Pneumon, 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 mm-hmm. Woo, we'll skip that. And other lung problems. Graft versus host disease. Acute GVHD. Okay, yeah. So I guess everything has side effects. Possible side effects. Welcome to the modern world of medicine. Modern world of medicine. Whenever people start talking about medicine and like, um, Cybernetic augmentations? No. Oh. We're not going down that path. Oh, okay. Um, 
but healing yeah. people, like I think about um Elysium. Do you did you see that movie? That's with Matt Damon and they yeah. had like that white like planet that he Is goes to Blunt? to explode everything. No, it's not with Emily Blunt. It's um I, don't know. I forget her name, but um That's what, yeah, yeah so- it's it's Matt Damon. <laughs> And the the place that you're talking about is actually a ring in space that looks like the Halo ring. I thought it was like a white ball planet or something. It was a ring? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a ring. Then it was probably super, not super eight. Damn it. When the guy's turning to an alien slowly. Oh, I never saw that movie, but I think I know what you're talking about. You haven't seen it? District 9. You haven't seen District 9? Oh, yeah, I saw District 9. I thought you were talking about something else. That, you, the the one with the bug people? Yeah. Yeah, and he turns into a bug. Well, don't play it. Come on, dude. I don't think I mean, that movie is super old. I'm pretty sure everyone's seen it. And you kind of figure that he does, but you should definitely watch it. I don't think I've seen that movie, but I've seen a similar movie involving war and alien people, but I don't think I've seen that. I wasn't going to, so I don't really... Okay, well, I mean, that if you haven't seen District 9 for that audio list or video, you should definitely watch it. It's definitely worth a watch. But the whole point I brought it up was because in Elysium, you, if you, you said you saw it, right? Yes. So I you did. remember when, they, when he he goes to the ring yeah. or goes up there or whatever, and it's a machine that cures everything? Mm-hmm. Like, literally, you just lay in the bed, and then it scans your body. It's like, oh, you got cancer. Curing cancer. And it, <laughs> it goes deleting cancer. <laughs> yeah. That joke is like, why can't? Well, one random that's fiction, but hopefully, I can only assume that the doctors here in the R and D departments are finding a way to get to that stage, and not just buying yachts. They probably might be somewhere near it. They just have to figure out how to monetize it. I have a question that's similar to what Brian is saying. It's like, do you think that? Do you think that? There's a lot of cures. There's, do you think there's cures for a lot of things, but they haven't released them because of what he said, because money? I think it can either be money or the side effects are more of an issue with said things and the issue itself. Probably hmm. one, one or both. <clears throat> The reason I one of the re- the only reason I've ever questioned it is because because I used to hear a Hold lot on. of because Jordan says that's bullshit. Uh, Kevin True, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. True Dio, T R U D E A U already did that. Did what? What are you guys were just talking about? I spaced out. So what? Also, get to get a drug released, you need multiple clinical trials. It's not an easy process. Oh. The, but I, the reason why, because I've heard a lot of people say stuff like that or make that assumption, but the only thing that has ever made me like go, hmm, Magic Johnson Kevin. was diagnosed <laughs> with full blown AIDS when I was in high school. Yeah, that's true. This dude is still alive with no signs. Like he's, it's like Dave, <laughs> Dave Chappelle said. Like every time I see you, you getting stronger. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they they have ways of suppressing it, or maybe they have something that help that I don't know that maybe aids his body in suppressing it. I don't know if that makes any sense. I have I don't I'm not a medical expert. I don't know anything about drugs <laughs> that go into your body through needles or radiation. Fam, I'm not Bruce Banner. It just makes okay? me it, like that alone just makes me think: what if there is a cure? But if your pocket isn't deep enough, you can get that cure. <clears throat> I think he's just wearing a new body that looks like uh, Magic Johnson. Like Yo, in, uh, I'll be like, Altered I'll shake carbon. his ass. Yo, fucking tell me where the robotic bodies are. Like in Altered Carbon, he just has a... He just duplicated his uh, sleeve, which is the, the body aspect of you. Magic Johnson has a ridiculous amount of money and access to the best doctors in the world. He's also an elite athlete. There's lots of drugs per Randall's answer. Remember when the EpiPen went to $700? People are asshats. <laughs> they really are, man. That jump makes no sense to me, man. Like, why do we have to pay to stay alive? Do you know how messed up that sounds? Okay, so let me be the devil's advocate here. 
and back up a bit. Canada, you don't have to pay for it. Man, hold on. Just saying. I'm just saying. But someone has to pay for it. Like, yeah, Canada, you don't have to pay, but someone's paying it. You're paying it through your taxes. If Canada has tax, like, it's being paid for. I thought that Canada's health insurance isn't what you have to pay for, but doesn't health insurance only cover a percentage? I don't know. I had a map from, from Canada. I just know that it's more affordable there. I don't know if it's completely free or what the issue is. We're already paying for it in taxation in the U.S. ADR it is. We need a form of socialized medicine in the U.S. We're already paying for it in taxation in the U.S. I mean, we're paying a shitload of taxes. I can, I, I know. I, every year, I definitely know I'm paying a lot in taxes. <laughs> but I'm not... I, when I go to a, a hospital or something, I'm like, oh, well, we value the amount of taxes we stole from you. I mean, taken from you. I mean, you've given us for the past X years. You get everything for a year. Well, you're, you're, we'll, we'll cure you and you go home scot-free. Yo, they can't wait to charge you. As you're putting your fucking pants back on, like, oh, so that'll be uh, $43,000. But all you did was, oh, now that you back talked me, $47,000. What? Uh, Zoran says we could fully fund socialized medicine and forgive all student debt if we just stop tax cuts. Not even joking, read the CBO estimates. Yo, but yes, we can do that, but then we need people to, to change it. And the people who are who have the power to change it are gonna be like, well, no, I can just get more cash. I need a seventh yacht. My kid's gonna have a kid. He needs a yacht. Randall, doesn't your wouldn't your kid need a yacht too? Wouldn't your kids' kids need another yacht? What if your yacht needs a yacht? I mean, it's sad, but true. Like, when you have the option of just getting the people up there, like, yeah, I've been swimming in money since I was X years, like. I'm just since feel, 60 years old. I'm 97 now. I feel like after a certain point, it's like, you what, how how much more money are you going to need? It's, there is literally a point to where you get so much money, you don't have to get any more money for the rest of your life because the interest alone of that money sitting in the bank, you can survive just on the interest. So why would you need more money? Well, define survive. Huh? Define survive. What to you is surviving? What do you mean? I don't understand the question. Like what it, for you is because surviving would be just house, food. No, I mean like not even house probably. I mean, can, I mean like uh, when you fucking tent somewhere out. Like I mean like when you want something, you never, not even for a split second, even look at the price. You just like, oh, I want this. Buy. Randall, something. Yes, yeah, something. I don't think that's then that must be a high ass amount for interest to cover that because. You know how much money you can you can yeah, blow walking from Versace to Gucci to Louis Vuitton, Randall? It is. That's what I'm talking about. It is. If you have like a, a substantial amount of money that you can live off the interest, like it's a lot. I'm not talking about like a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. I'm talking about well into the millions. Probably millions, maybe billions. Which people in the medical field, especially doctors, they acquire that type of money like pretty quickly. Obviously, you know, like you, you was in a, no, I'm talking about what you're, I'm not a doctor. I'm talking right, about right. your recent experience. Oh, okay. you know, like you, you're, you're in doctor. the hospital just getting tortured for what? How many days was it? You were in there three days, two, was it two? It was Friday. You left Sunday. Yeah. So we say two and a half. It's just two days. What, what time did it, that's irrelevant. The point of the matter is, is that. Did he? Did they really? Did they really they did fix dick. anything? They literally just oh here I'm a vacuum do a little bit then we'll put it on fucking extra slow mode so nothing really fucking happens for another two days and then oh but while I'm sitting there just shitting my life away we're gonna charge you for this night here welcome to the seven star hotel yeah fuck out of here dude I heard like an ambulance cost like how much did you say it was Brian? Uh, about three thousand. Why? I've heard. I've Why? heard. I've, I mean, I've never used an ambulance. So. Why? Why? Why does it cost that much? You are trying to save my life. Why do I gotta pay you three thousand dollars to save my life? Hey, man, that's the beginning. That's 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 the co the beginning of the cost to save your life here in America, dude. Yeah, but now they're gonna have a Uber emergency, and you can have someone come over to you and <laughs> pick you up. Yeah, I'd rather have that. That's probably be cheaper. <laughs> But see, that doesn't matter because the whole point 
with an ambulance is not only does it have no. the necessary equipment inside to keep you alive, but they I'm get kidding. the they get the run lights. Oh, you were kidding about the Uber stuff? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were for real. I'm like, yo, next time, <laughs> fucking Uber emergency, dude. No. That'd be a lot cheaper, dude. Now that I said it, though, they're going to make that, and I don't get any money for it. Oh, shit, Zordon messaged me. If you look at the CBO estimates, the Trump tax cuts stop all contributions to the GDP around 2024. But the tax cuts for corporations and the upper class are permanent. Oh, nice. That's fair. These tax cuts cost upwards of $800 billion a year starting in 2025. Wow. It's not like this country's already in debt, but let's just... Okay. Ah. <sighs> What a wild podcast so far. We went from fucking what if the states become countries to concussions and the state of the NFL to how terrible our government is. <laughs> Did we even we got our own ethical questions. You didn't open one yet. Yeah, I haven't opened one yet. But I'm gonna open up one that is from a movie, which is Sophie's Choice. Which is a pretty simple uh... one. It's a quick one. We'll do some ethical questions here. So there's a, a book called Sophie's Choice that made into a movie, which I think, um, who played her again? Fuck. Meryl Streep. Played this uh, Polish woman named Sophie Zawista, whatever. She's Polish. Uh, she was arrested by the Nazis and sent to an Auschwitz death camp. When she arrived, oh, I'm sorry, on arrival, she is honored, honored in quotes, for not being a Jew by being allowed a choice. One of her children will be spared the gas chamber if she chooses which one. In an agony of indecision, as both children are being taken away, she suddenly choose. She suddenly does choose. They can take her daughter, who is younger and smaller. Sophie has. So Sophie hopes that her older and stronger son will be able to survive the camp, but she loses track of him and never does learn of his fate. Did she do the right thing? Years later, haunted by the guilt of having chosen between her children, Sophie commits suicide. Should she have felt guilty? So the question for you guys is: You have two kids. One's older. Look like this. Same same scenario. They're going to be taken to a gas chamber. And if you don't choose, both of them are. So you can't just sit there and be like, oh, let me think about it. Dun, 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 dun. It's, yo, split second. As they're taking both your younger, your youngest daughter and your older son. So in this example, you can't be like, take me instead. No, Randall. The How old are, are the kids? I'm sure in the, in the movie itself it tells you it's just one of them is a younger daughter the other, the other one's older. The the son's older. So you have to pick between your kid your you have Yo, to Yo, this is morbid, man. I I can't Nah, I can't make no decision like that. Well, this is the point of this this that's why we're doing this segment, Randall. The, right? I'm telling you that's my answer. I can't okay, make a decision. But you have then they both die. Are you you are you shrugging off? They both die. I mean, what? Can, how can you pick? Because you can save one of them. I understand yeah. that, but how do you pick one? You gotta make it as objective in your head as you possibly can. But there's no like object. That. But there's no objection when it comes to your children. I mean, first of all, neither out of the three of us, none of us can fully understand. How heavy this question is. Yeah, I'm not none a parent. Of us, none of us mm -hmm. had kids. So I'm not we a don't, parent. We don't so understand. I don't plan on being a parent. The so. intensity connected to having someone come from your loins. So, with that being said, anything we say is going to be logical, which is at the very end is still going to be inaccurate. Someone in the chat says, I think the correct answer is to say nothing. Then you lose both your children. If you're faced with something like the Nazis, you need absolutism. I don't even know what any of that means. Also, I don't care whether Nazis are 80 to 100 years old. We need, we need to kill them all without regard to the press. Jesus, that is some hate right there. I'm not saying I don't agree. Anyway. <laughs> we're moving on. Um, So which one are you choosing? I probably picked the same choice she did. Yeah, the, the daughter is the youngest, therefore I have to think that she has a longer life ahead of her. Why end her life earlier when she's the youngest for the son? No, she chose the the, the girl to die first, and the kids oh, going really? to the choice is who you pick goes to the gas chamber, and the other one still goes to the camp. So the the girl was picked to die in the gas camp. See, that's she, what I'm saying. 
can, can you let me finish? So the thing is, she chose she chose the, her daughter to die in the gas chamber because she's not gonna make the, the death camp. Like she's not gonna be able to survive Auschwitz on her own because he's younger. So that's why she's like, hopefully, my my son, since he's he's older, stronger, he can survive the camp, and then we can reunite one after like maybe Sunday. But she's never seen him after that since that day, and then she kills herself. Years and years later. I I probably picked the daughter to go to the camp. Like these are the more like morality questions that you just what the fuck and you gotta you gotta yeah. pick. So Randall, you, last I talked to you and a couple seconds ago, you said shrug. They both die, so you gotta pick one here. Only you want both of them, to, know, knowing they both die. I'll read the chat while you decide here. I can't, there is no decision. The worst part about it is like, is this conversation being had right in front of them where they can hear, or is it yes. like they pull you to the side? Damn, that's even worse. Yeah, it's right the there. other one dies knowing that you chose for them to die. It's happening right in front of like it's a group of people. She they're they're pulling the, the kids away. You got to make a choice, and she instinctively grabs the girl for that reason, or tells them to take the girl for that reason. That's horrible, man. I, I got to go with my answer just for the hope that because she's younger, maybe someone will help her or some kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to go with that. There's no help in concentration camps, though, man. They, they, they segregate everybody. Not necessarily. They put, uh, there was a book I read about a survivor of one of the camps, and they usually put you within, not a group home, but they put you in like, you know how the military they have separate little cots or multiple soldiers have their own bed to stay in and if they're not on training or if they're not doing uh training mm -hmm. it's kind of like that where there's a bunch within certain i don't know what that would be called like a hut and they they do help each other at least from the book that i read like there was an old man who would sometimes give the kids some of his food even though they only got like one piece of bread for the day and butter okay you just gotta like in that situation whichever one dies you have to ho hope that there's someone like that for the other kid because if not then the, whole, the movie happens Let's see if I can find a little ba, ba, ba. oh here we go this one I guess you'll be able to answer Randall it's not as morbid alright dogs or cats Actually, let's do that. Dogs or cats? Everybody here unanimously picks dogs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Randall already gave me the look. Cats are only acceptable when they're kittens. After that, I just don't want to see a cat in my life. And cats are only acceptable when they can kill you. What movie is that from? Sophie's Choice. <clears throat> oh, no, what he wrote. While walking along the desert, he's going to look down. Turn the clock towards you. You gotta read it out loud. This is a podcast. While walking, quote, while walking along job. in it's desert sands, you suddenly look down and see a tortoise crawling toward you. You reach down and flip it over onto its back. The tortoise lies there, its belly baking in the sun, beating its legs, trying to turn itself over, but it cannot do so without your help. You are not helping. Why? End quote. What movie is that from? Oh boy, I'm bad with trivia. I have no idea. <sighs> but my, my, my instinctive answer is the Robin Williams and Matt Damon movie. My guess would be that it's on a landmine, and if you move it again, it's going to blow both of you up. <laughs> That'd be my answer. <laughs> All right, well, while he's typing, we got this. So, okay, so both wrong. Damn it. Uh, you're at your best friend's wedding just an hour before the ceremony is to start. Earlier that day, you came across definitive proof that your best friend's spouse-to-be is having an affair with the best man slash maid of honor, and you catch them sneaking out of a room together looking the shell which is like oh I gotta get yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. they just finished banging one out if you tell your friend about the, that affair their day, their day will be ruined but you don't want to want them to marry a cheater what do you do you tell them option one is tell your best friend sure the day will be ruined but better a day ruined than an entire life say nothing your job is to be supportive and participate in your friend's happiness yeah that's easy okay um, I'm trying to help you because you're like oh I can't pick a I want both my kids dead like I, you gotta the real answer is you murder the spouse and and frame the guy that she was cheating with. Okay. Yep, that's recorded. That's deep. Yep. 
Ryan, yeah. Ryan's on the list her. now. <laughs> Ryan's gonna be on the NSA list now. It's obvious. I, I guess unanimously tell them, right? Yeah, of course. That's easy. This one I thought I can go either way. You're an eyewitness to a crime. A man has robbed a bank, but instead of keeping the money for himself, he donates it to a poor orphanage that can now afford to feed, clothe, and care for its children. You know who committed the crime. If you go to the authorities with the information, there's a good chance the money will be returned to the bank, leaving a lot of kids in need. What do you do? Turn the robber in because right is right, and say nothing to since the money went. Since say nothing since the money went to what you need, what you deem a good cause. Say nothing. The only other side, if I do devil's advocate, is what if it's stolen from somebody who already does good things? It's a bank. Yeah, but that's people's money, isn't it? Yeah. Banks I mean, don't carry that much cash. It isn't a catastrophic loss. I mean, if that's the like, yeah, I'll, com I'll commit to it. I already said I allowed them to have to commit to it. Randall? Wait, I, I, I didn't catch it. Oh, my God, Randall. Just, you know why you didn't catch it? Because when I finished reading, I looked at you after I finished reading, and you're on your phone, dude. Because I was trying to look up the Twitter thing. But go ahead. Oh, my God. Um... You want me to read the whole thing again? You can just tell me what it, just tell me what happened. A guy robs a bank. Yeah. You see him rob a bank, but uh, then you also see him get what he robbed from the bank. He gives to an, I think it's an orphanage, an orphanage, which now you, they can feed, clothe, and whatever, and take care of the kids. So you have a choice between, okay. you know who you know who committed the crime. So you can either go to the police, but they might take back the money and and whatever happens happens, or you can just stay quiet because you know it's going to a good cause. I would have to think about that one. Um, no, I don't mean like right now. I'm just saying like if I was in that situation, I would have to think about it. Because do you do, do you think that once the authorities find out that the money went to an orphanage, that they're going to take the money back from an orphanage? And that's where I'm torn. Because I'm like, I'm my curiosity is that. I would want to, like, this is how fucking bad shit crazy I am, I guess. I would tell it to the authorities just to see what would happen. I would tell them, like, yeah, this is happening, and then see if they would take the the, the money back or they'll leave. Because that is, that in itself, that, that is almost like this, the type of questions you're giving us, that's like the type of question that they got to deal with. It's like, do we take this money back from an orphanage? And if we do, how are we going to look? Exactly. So for me, I think telling the authorities gets a win-win, because you get the guy in jail for stealing because kids don't steal. Uh, it's a PS your ADLR PSA for the day. Uh, damn, I don't hear Ryan when you hear that. Anyway, the hell are we talking about? Oh, you said yeah, it's a win because he gets in jail, and then the I don't see the police going up to Norfolk and be like, I need the money back. They're gonna be like, oh, we'll let them keep the money and it makes them look even better. Yeah, but you can just see the money; it's on the table because he put it there. Oh, okay, oh, gotcha. Uh, Zordon said the quote was from Blade Runner. Yeah, I looked it up. It's the the Voigtkamp test. Is that from the beginning of this, the movie? Man, I was thinking that too. I okay, just couldn't Randall. remember. No, I was. I just I couldn't remember if it was the one with um if it was the first one or if it was the newest one. It might be in both. It was the thing first thing? one. I don't yeah. know if it's in the new one, but I googled. I put "flip the tortoise" movie quote, and then it showed the first one. Okay. It's probably in the beginning interview scene, right? It was blue, and the people two sitting at the table. I don't know. I said it was between someone named Leon and someone named Holden. Okay. Actually, I could see Randall recognized it. He just didn't say anything. What are you siding with Randall? Did he always get? Well, a he fan? said that. But he said he said that a while ago. He said that Randall knows him. Oh, okay. Um. That one's easy. Like these are easy. That's why I had to put more links because, like, this one's okay. Look at this one. You have a job as a network administrator for a company that also employs your best friend's husband. One day, your best friend's husband sends you a message asking you to release an email from quarantine. Excuse me. This requires you to open the email. At which point, you discover that it's correspondence between this guy and his secret lover. After releasing the email, you find yourself in a pickle. Your instinct is to tell your best friend about his husband's infidelities. Excuse me, but divulging the contents of company emails is against company policy, and you could lose your job. Mm. 
Once it becomes plain that your best friend found out about his cheating husband through a company email, all trails will inevitably, inevitably lead to you as a leak. Do you tell them about the indiscretion? What was that last part? It will lead to you as a leak. How? That's the only way you would have found out because you opened that email. That's all he has to say. Like, but oh, this I... conversation is between friends, right? What? What conversation? He told you. The person that asked you to open the email. Not open it, to delete it. But to delete it or to remove it from quarantine, you need to open it. So you, you, you read it. Okay, so the person that asked them to delete the email, who was it again? It was a, you know, your husband's friend? Yeah. Friend's husband. Your best friend's husband. Your best friend's husband. This is pretty easy. If, you, if you're allowed to extend on it, because you tell them, but you don't tell them to tell the husband. You just tell them to get a divorce. Maybe, oh, I'm in love with somebody. They make up something, and then boom, you're set, they're separate. I need to do it again because you hit your mic and it started making noise. Uh, you tell them of the email, but you tell them not to confront husband. You tell them to end it in a way that doesn't lead to this. So be like, oh, I've been seeing someone else. So I don't like love you anymore, and then that's it. Yeah, you, but... you you make them tell them in a way that does not directly uh, show that you know what happened. But we're not doing the what ifs. This is telling us once it becomes plain becomes becomes plain that your best friend found out about his cheating husband through a company email all trails. Like this is a this is what will happen. So you're picking one. So you tell them and you lose your job, or you don't tell them and you keep your and whatever happens to them happens to them and you keep your job. What the heck? The easy, it's, it's still easy. I still tell them I lose my job, I find another job. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm gonna. That's a noble thing to do. It's not noble. It's just, I'm an Avenger. That's what I'm programmed to do, Randall. Right? It's, it's still noble. Excuse me. Truth. All right. Oh, wait, did you answer, Brian? Uh, it's, it's the same answer. Okay. How about you, Randall? I concur. Same. The noble answer. Uh... Oh, shit. Okay, this one's... Okay. You've been on a cruise for two days when there's an accident that forces everyone to on board to abandon ship. During the, the evacuation, one of the boats is damaged, leaving it with a hole that fills it with water. You figure that with ten people in the boat, you can keep the boat afloat by having nine people scoop the filling water out by hand for ten minutes while the tenth person rests. After that person's tenth minute rest, he or she will go back to work while another person rests, and so on. They should keep the boat from sinking long enough for a rescue team to find you as long as it happens within five hours. You're taking your first break when you notice your best friend in a sound lifeboat with only nine people in it, and he beckons you to swim over to join them, so you won't have to keep bailing out water. If you leave the people in the sinking boat, they will only be able to stay afloat for two hours instead of five. Decreasing their chance of being rescued but securing yours, what do you do? I would stay. I'll stay. It's not, I mean, if it works, then it works. I agree. Yeah. Uh, you can't give me movie trivia, Zord, and I don't know trivia. I'm bad at trivia. I hate quizzes. I hate tests. ADR, you are being chased by a gang of cannibals, and you are alone in a forest with a gun. The gun has two bullets in the barrel, and one of the scouts, and one of the scouts for the gang has discovered you and your son. That part doesn't make sense, because how am I alone in a forest, and then my son's there? <laughs> Yeah, what? I don't know what. But he's just asking where, what, what, what movie is it from? I have no idea. I'm not. He's a wizard. He's a wizard. We'll get and make him get me out of there if he's a wizard. The, the fuck? Hell? Yeah, right. Get the fuck out of there. <laughs> Wanna... Oh, this. Oh, this one's a good one. I read this one. I had. Um, you are an EMT on the scene of a cra- of a car crash that involves your spouse and the lover you didn't know she he or she had. They are both gravely injured. Your spouse's injures, injuries... Okay, I'm sorry. They are both grave, gravely injured. Your spouse's injuries are the worst of them. You can tell it's unlikely she will pull through. Meanwhile, his or her lover has, has a neck wound that will prove fatal if pressure isn't applied soon. Whom do you choose to work on? Work on your spouse, even though she cheated and probably won't pull through. Your loyalty lies with them. Or work on his or her lover. They can definitely be saved, and even though you may hate them, saving them is your job. Of course, I'm gonna pick my spouse. Yeah. 
because then you're going to beat yourself up and think, what yeah. if? Yeah. One of them was dying. Yeah, either way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but you're going to pick the person that you're, you're connected to. Okay, I, I, I'm making sure that you guys are like... Okay. I'm, I thought you guys were saying, like, if you pick one, the other one might, like, might... Okay, never mind. No, I mean, you're thought... pretty much saying well, whoever you pick, the other one is going to die. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Brian, what's going on, dude? Uh, but yeah, the, for me, it's easy too. It's the spouse one. Because I'll divorce her right afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I'll get 80% of whatever the hell she has. Um, the doctor's dilemma is the the one that was shown in I Am Mother. The organ one. Oh, really? Yeah, they, so I guess it's a popular one because it's... It's basically this one again. So I finished that page. I mean, just we can go back to the, the morbid ones if you want. <laughs> You're an inmate in a concentration camp. What is with you in these concentration camps, man? We gotta, we gotta, gotta focus. Yeah, you gotta make sure. You know, a sadistic guard is about to hang your son who tried to escape and wants you to pull the chair from underneath him. He says that if he don't he will not only kill your son but some other innocent inmate as well you don't have any you don't have any doubt that he means what he says what should you do you can either kill the morally innocent son which is uh just your kid dying or don't kill that your morally innocent son and your kid dies and so so someone else That's easy. yeah you pull the chair no heck no so you're gonna have somebody else die just because it's because your, your son. son dies. He dies regardless. He dies. I understand that, but it's the difference between your son being killed by somebody else and you killing your son. And you still have to watch your son be killed and then somebody else be killed because of you. I still, I, I don't know. You're not. Is no. You're not gonna be all right after knowing that you killed your son. But you also saved a life. But you mm-hmm. killed your son. Do you I, get, not, I, I don't not, know how many times I, say, I can say this. I'm it not, is your son. I'm not going to understand it like truthfully because I'm not going to have a kid. Yeah. But looking through, I'm like, I can save some some other person's life. Granted, they're all prisoners, so they're there for a reason. Mm-hmm. So um, that's why I have two. I probably have a split personality, to be honest. But one of them's like, yo, kill them both. Because, yes, he's your son, but then somebody in the prison gets killed. And I guess that saves... The potential of him getting let out free and he's also like a killer slash rapist or something. Because he says innocent prisoner. If you're an innocent, why are you... Oh, it's a concentration it's camp. Yeah, Never mind. It's, it's... it's not a prison, it's a concentration camp. That's why. Okay, uh-huh. that makes more sense now. Because from when I read it the first time, I'm like, if it's a prisoner, like he's in prison, he did something wrong. No, this is not Not the necessarily. Case. There's people that are wrongly uh, accused of something and then go to prison for years just to yeah. find out that... Hey, we were wrong about this sentence. Yeah. Uh, that's true. But I don't think that applies here. I read it incorrectly. Yeah, this is this a concentration is just, camp. Yeah, this is just a concentration camp. So it's definitely, it probably is another innocent person. Pull the chair. I, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Brian with this one. You, ha- you have to somehow stomach it because you're saving somebody else's kid. Like, your kid's already been, his his life has been written. Like his story's been written. He's going to die here. But you get to change whether or not someone else's life is, like, you know, whether or not they're a good or bad person, they ha- they have a chance. But again, as, I'm a not person a, I'm, who's, as a person who would be a parent in that situation, you, would, you wouldn't put someone else's kid or take someone else's kid's life while also losing yours. If you can't help your kid, why would you put another parent through whatever's going on with their a kid? A loss of their child. Mm-hmm. That's selfish for no reason. I couldn't see killing my own child. So you're going to pick with... I think you can ask any person on this block... <laughs> they kill their own pat, their own child, and they're all gonna say no, no matter what the situation. Is. I get it, yeah, I understand neighbor, that. But that one neighbor is gonna be like, "Yeah, I'm from Cuba. I've lived here." <laughs> <laughs> Who lives here? Oh my yeah. god! What was I gonna say? So yeah, like again, this is a different perspective. I don't have a kid. I don't plan on having a kid. So this, for me, I would imagine saving another person's another person's kid would be the the thing to do. I don't know. So you're sticking with just hey. You do what you got to do. You're you're killing my son in front of me, and you're also killing somebody else. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure this is like the last one where this conversation is happening, happening right in front of your son. Yeah, probably. Yeah, nah. 
What if you're? Oh, so let, let's. This they, is they, they, my answer on, is still the same. Wait, 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 wait. So let's extend it. This is not part of the question. So now, what if your kid? This is just us spitballing now. So what if your kid tells you to do it? I'm still not gonna do it because it'll save somebody else. I'm still not gonna do it. Oh shit. Okay. I was expecting you to switch your answer. Okay. It's my child. Okay, we get it, man. Don't yell at me, dude. I'm getting scared. Man. <laughs> Technically, it was your child because he dies. Yeah, that's true. Oh man. Uh, all right, we'll go for that. That was another morbid one. Let's move on to something else. More lighthearted, please. A little bit, yeah. I thought you just snapped yeah, your like, desk. Yeah, like, why did you anger? just wrestle all of my desks to get up, bro? Like, that's like, my what? fucking son you're killing. <laughs> that's your excuse. He's gonna go do some shadow box jabs in his room to get that anger out of him. Okay. He just lost his son. You know the movie Sad Zordon? What's it called? The Boy in the Striped Pajamas? That movie's depressing. That's a funny title. Well, it's about a, a kid in a concentration camp, so it's, it's, it's not that good. Alright, Randall, this is a pretty simple one. Would you rather never get angry or never be envious? Never That's easy envious. for me. You pick envious? Okay. Mm -hmm. Never be envious. Whoa. <laughs> I'm on my own. I'm, I'm, I'm picking never get angry. Envious That'd is be... um, cancerous. So is well, anger. So is anger. Mm. You know, they're both deadly sins, right? Yeah. Anger is wrath. I think... I think being envious is a... Just my opinion. I just think it's worse. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to hear what what were your thoughts. I pick about envious because if you're never envious again, then you're more content with what you already have. So it doesn't matter if you're angry; you're you're still fine with whatever you're given. As opposed, to if you're never angry, you're still wanting from what someone else has. Just all you have is sad to react in that way. No, so I'm, I'm fine with that because because I, I use env that for me the envy is a motivation. Like if I want something somebody else has, I work towards getting it in my own way. So it depends on the person. I would. I, I'm taking it as it depends on the person. So if I can never get angry, I'm I'm cool. Because the envy thing doesn't bother me. If someone got something I don't got. If I want it, I'll just go end up get not like steal it. I'm talking about like I'll attain it. Is the same. You mean steal? No, I don't mean like walk up and be like this is mine now. Mm -hmm. That's my girl now, and he revolvers the boyfriend. Oh shit! <laughs> like the deuce, walk up to a dude and just revolvers him in the forehead, dude. Oh my god. All right, so both envious for both of you guys. It's gonna be anger for me. I don't want to be content, like not angry when it's lagging. I need to let that out. I don't want to be like, oh, it's lagging. Yeah, but you won't feel anger. You just be like, okay, you just okay, it's it's it's, lag it's lagging. No, no, no. I need I need that anger. Okay. This is just for me, because at this point, I need I need a tech question here. Would you rather humans go to the moon again or go to Mars? Mars. Mars. That's the correct question. Somebody That's the correct put their answer. Tims in the moon, like go, yeah. go put your Tims in Mars. That is the correct answer. I mean, this fact, is a no, subjective go question. Than Mars. Oh, the moon. Pluto. I'm I'm trying to be in, even though it's not a planet anymore. Or did they say it is again? What? Pluto? No, I don't think they so. They keep saying, oh, it's not a planet. And they're like, no, it's a planet. And then they're like, Pluto? no, it's not a planet. Yeah, they've went back and forth for Pluto, so I don't know what it is currently. So wait, if it's not a planet, what were they saying it was? A dwarf star, I think. A dwarf something. It's, it's, they think it's a moon for some. I don't remember. Some bullshit. It was being okay. sizest. All right, so um, next one real, real quick here. Would you rather know the uncomfortable truth of the world or believe a comforting lie? Uncomfortable truth. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah, that's, that's the, unanimous right there. Don't lie to my here. face. <laughs> no, it's about the world. Not no, no. It's not like. Yeah. Okay. It's so saying you can either be told a lie and you're like, oh, I'm okay with this, or be like, yo, babies run the world. Like what the fuck? Oh, sh oh, remember that fucking episode of the Love, Death, and Robots with the what was it? 
It wasn't cereal. It, remember, it was like it was like oh, cereal. It was milk. The, was it milk? No, yogurt. It was, like, it was yogurt. 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 Yeah. yogurt. Was it yogurt running the world? That show was funny. Dude. <laughs> I think Jacob's gonna make another season of that. I still need to watch uh, Black se- Black Season, the Black Mirror season. <laughs> Same here. We still yeah. gotta watch that. Um, I think we've already asked this one before, but I still ask it again because fuck it, who cares? Would you rather be transported permanently five hundred years into the future or five hundred years into the past? I don't have to, I don't have to answer this, right? Wait, wait. When you when you get transported. Does it affect you? Uh, doesn't ma- doesn't mention it, but I guess we can set ground rules. It doesn't. What do you mean affects you? Like, do you de-age because you'll be dead? I guess that makes sense. Yeah. You're not so it's, it's it's yeah. Like unless you're unless you got something to tell us, Randall, you fucking time traveler, like. They're actually, five hundred and eleven. Yeah, he's like seven hundred years old. <laughs> <laughs> no, fifteen hundred. Right I fucking knew it. Oh shit! So yeah, you when you teleport, it's just you right now. So if you took your cell phone with you, you'd blow everyone's fucking mind, um, and they'll call you a wizard. Well, I definitely would not want to go to the past, especially yeah, him because mm, that's the also very true. A long time. <laughs> it sure did. So I guess yours will be future. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, future is both for you. Mm-hmm. And what kind of I, question is that? I definitely don't have to answer that question. You I want to be a Gundam pilot. <laughs> oh shit! The fuck? Would you rather donate your body to science or donate your organs to people who need them? Dang. I'm not an organ donor, so I guess my body to science. What? I mean, but what? That's a, but apart from that, bro. Like, if you had a choice right now, like, not right now, obviously, but if you had a choice. To do it, I'm not saying you have to be an organ donor. I, I would have to go. That's, that's that's how I'm justifying my answer. Okay. Because I'm not would, one. Got it. I would have to go with donate. You'd be you donate to, to. I just feel like it would be more more beneficial. Because there's nothing exceptional about my body, and I think that science is going like, oh my god, we unlocked. Okay. <laughs> how did he get this whopper? All right. Anyway. <laughs> What if you like knock some? <laughs> okay, yeah, we're moving on. It's gonna go beyond dark here in a second. So, yeah, I have, I, have, I would have to ask, ask them what they need my body for. Like, what is needing for me? It's the the organ donor too, because what do you need my body for science? Like, yes, I'm, you know, from Asgard. You could probably learn a lot from me. But like, if it's not, I could just give my Asgardian powers to other people. You know what I'm saying? They just need to know how, like, it's physically capable to survive this long being sick with it. So that's why I have to give them my body. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's organs for me. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. ADR, would you consent to your body being used to grow organs? That's a thing? That's making, like, cloning uh, organs? Um, do they make... Whoa, that is a thing? That. And if that's the science part, yeah. Because you can just clone it, then I can help a bunch of people. As long as they're not cloning me and then taking the organs, because then it's just having myself die and I have a say in it. Like if you yeah. just, oh, my heart, you know, and then I give it to somebody, but not me, so you can take the heart up. Got it, yeah. I, yeah, if it's just the organs being cloned and not myself, and then you just, like, shoot me in the forehead and then take my fucking liver or something. I got a question in the, in the same realm of what we're talking about. So, let me see if I can ask this the correct way. If you become a clone, let's say you. It's not me. You just said if I become a clone, there's no way. If there so is a clone, okay. Okay, so you know how you are aware of you of your existence. Yeah, a clone is not if me. If you trans- die, and just before you die, they clone you. I'm still dead. That's a different person. I understand that. Okay. But my but my question is, will you know it's you? Or do you die with your original body? No, you'll what know you it's mean? me. If they do a perfect one-to-one... Cl- look, this is all hypothetical. Uh, uh, po- okay. Because the way memories work is firing a certain amount of certain signals in certain ways. That's how memories... We don't have an actual hard drive on here being written somewhere. It's just signals being transferred or 
flung in certain ways at certain times at certain sp whatever. If you clone me right before I die, and me knowing I'm going to die, then I'll come. I'll come back going, oh fuck, I'm gonna die, and then realize I'm fine. Mm -mm. But then you realize, oh shit, my other person, the other guy died, but I'm different. Like I'm dead. I'm dead, dead. But the other clone knows that the original died. It it depends on how they present it to you. Because if you're about to die and you don't, and then you're fine, they can say they saved you in a certain way. As long as you, they can hide the body and make it seem like they miraculously saved you, and you wouldn't really know. Yeah. So I guess the question is how. I guess it's a question for Brandon, not Brian, because Brian just that's a different. What happens after I die? How is um, are we right next to each other when it happens? Like I'm about to die, and then the clone just whoop and appears next to me, or is it something that the clone is sedated and then he wakes up hours later after you cleaned up the original body? I have questions. What if it was like the Keanu Reeves movie? Were they? He, well, in the Keanu Reeves movie, they started getting flashbacks and stuff. Cause they told him lies. Cause he. But it's kind of like what you just said. Yeah. Like they had the accident, and he trans he he saved them just before they completely died. Yeah. So when they when he grew them and he put their consciousness back into them, they, they those those um uh, flashes they were they were getting were their last moments of mm -hmm. being alive. Yeah. That's different in the sense that they're remembering what put them into the state that they're in. Like, it happened with an accident. If he's cloned before he dies, he's still going to know what happened prior to that point. But the other one's not going to know he died, and that's just a clone unless you present it to him that way. Unless you told him that you died previously. Mm -hmm. Unless that's you tell him that he's a clone, yeah. Because he would already know. If you don't delete what put him in his deathbed, then he's going to know everything up until that point. You just won't know the final part. Zordon says, it's a different person, but they are incentivized to follow your traits and thoughts. Yeah. So it's no longer you. Yeah, one, a clone is not you transferred. That makes sense? Yeah. It's just Anthony, too. It's not, yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, it's not just me. He just has everything. all your information from, yes. the, from the first game. Yeah. And he has your Carfax. Yes, pretty much. Crazy. You guys should watch Art Altered Carbon already. For those of you who haven't seen Rick and Morty, there's an episode where the entire episode you're wondering who the fuck is cloned. With if Beth is cloned or if uh Oh yeah. Basically is Beth a clone? It gets to a point where you don't know who's the real yeah, Beth. Yeah, yeah. And that is a fantastic episode. It's basically what we just discussed. I remember watching it because I was like looking really hard at him. Yeah, you you try to look at fucking a drawing like. Yeah. like oh, did she wink there? Yeah, is there some sort of sign? Yeah, it's very good. Uh, I was going to make a joke, but Brian won with the Carfax. Yeah, I mean, you should always try. Even I mean, yours could have been like a contender, like a second, like a runner up. Runner ups get awards. My finger's bleeding. That's weird. Might have been when he's you. A clone. It might might have been when you hit your mic on accident he's a couple a of times. No, he's a clone. I'm telling you right now, he's a clone. Shit. <laughs> Look at it. And his like eyes <laughs> like start uh, like spinning and shit. All right, people, we made it to two hours talking about fucking nonsense. I say it wasn't nonsense. We actually had some pretty good. What was the here. last one you was you was getting ready to uh, read something before I went on that tangent about clone? I was. Yeah, you was about to read. I guess the next. one. No, I wasn't gonna. No, I haven't picked one yet. Oh. Because okay. the last one I did was the donate organ one. Well, you want to do one more? Okay. Holy shit! Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Would you rather speak? I guess we'll stick with the memory stuff. Would you rather lose all of your memories from birth to now, or lose your ability to make new long-term memories? What the heck? That's fucked. <laughs> that is fucked. Because I have a lot of good memories I already want to keep. But I want to make more too. I would probably stick with the ones I have now and then write down my mem like shit that's happened to me so I can be like, I guess it's happened to me. So I know it, like a record keeping. Like 50 first dates? I was just yeah, curious. Like that. Yeah, like that. And then like, I, I'd watch it again and be like, I guess it's happened to me. Yay, I'm happy. Yeah, but could you imagine like 10 years after this happened? That would be a long video to it's, watch, man. I mean, I just want the cliff notes. 
you know? And you became the best at Dragon Ball. Um, you uh, Nobody can touch you in Forza Horizon. Uh, you shot six times in one day once. That was awesome. Uh, you know? Things like that. It didn't last a couple minutes. If it's in that, like that movie, she slowly started to remember new stuff. Remember, she started drawing Adam Sandler's character without knowing who he was. It was sublim, like yeah, it was like subconsciously, yeah. But she just still didn't know who he was. She's just like, oh fuck, I draw you. But we're not going off of what fifty first dates hat. Like we're mm -hmm. just going off of this. Like that's that's weird though. How could you? You'd basically be a grown baby because you have no skills. Then if you forget everything. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Like, how could you? How could you continue to live if you can't remember? You don't remember how to brush your teeth. You don't remember how to wash your behind. Mm -hmm. Or speak. You or don't speak. Use... Or eat. <laughs> Any of that stuff. <laughs> I don't know if it's wrong. that deep. I don't know if it's that technical, where you would lose motor functions. But technically, I guess I mean, that, would, that, would, that would that would yeah that would that would probably happen if we sat down and thought about it long enough. But I just I'm sure I'm sure they're just thinking of like happy memories and stuff like, you know, I, my answer's still birth to now, and then I guess I'll fuck my future right. Like my I got nah, someone's, someone's got to record something for nah, me. Nah, like, I'm I'm keeping the. That's what I just said. No, I'm I'm talking to my. I'm gonna keep go with the from now forward. Oh, Forget the past. okay. I but, just you know what I do. Wait, does this happen like instantaneous or do I, like, is there a window? Okay, this I'm, is going to happen. I'm sure it's instantaneous, man. It's not going to um, make it easier for us. The one, the well, one... here's the thing. If you choose the forward one, you can always talk to relatives and they can tell you what happened. In the how past. long until they pass than, away? Than, then write different. it down. I don't know. Well, that's different than actually, like, remembering what happened because it's I... just you being told a story, though. I don't know. I'll but... probably, probably go with the same answer you did since if it's instant, I'd be like, oh, shit. And everything that I use is around me. So, yeah. yeah I was gonna have an example but of if, what I was. If motor skills are gone, then I don't know. I probably pick the other one because I don't want to be sitting here just going <laughs> like, like trying to stand crazy. up and you're like fucking octo dad. Yeah, somehow I'm like trying to get out of my chair and I just shit myself. <laughs> Damn, I was gonna make an example like a point. I forgot what it was. Oh well. Was it shit yourself? <laughs> I completely forgot. This is this is why I need to remember the. You go on the computer, and you, in, in your history it says you, just... it says you've been, been to this website four hundred and sixty five times, and you read it, it says porn. I'm gonna be like, okay, that sounds about right. I'm hard right now, you know. Yeah, if somebody knew this was gonna happen, they can fuck with you because they can change your history to be like most recent searches how to come out of the closet, and then you're gonna think you're a gay. <laughs> Jeez. That's not. See, that's bad. <clears throat> oh my god. Damn, I forgot. I was gonna make a point too about the remembering now stuff. Oh like well, Coco? it's it, gone. Was it a Coco example? Damn, Coco was too good. That's another recommendation. If you haven't seen Coco by Pixar, watch it. Especially if you're Hispanic, watch it with your Hispanic family. Everyone will cry. Oof. All right, people, that's it. We made it to two hours talking about, I don't think any, not a single game was talked about in this entire episode. So what are you going to be doing this week, Brian? I don't know. I'm just working on stuff, I guess, outside of it. I don't know if I'm going to stream or not because I might want to use that time for something else. Okay. Apparently the... The event that's on Saturday is happening, but I think it ends at 4 p.m., so I don't know what you want to do with that information. Fuck off. How many episodes is Stranger Things, bro? Randall? Yeah, I don't know. Do you know the wasn't episode it like, count? Wasn't it like 13? They kept adding like an episode each season. It was like from the previous on. Stranger Things season. That's not high school season. Season 3 episode list. Are you, are you gonna watch Spider Man this weekend or no? Yeah. There's eight. Eight episodes. That's easy. That's easy. So eight hours, probably, depending on how long each episode is. So we would end.
like around 12. That's if, a work day. It is a work day. Or we can split into four a day. I guess we could, yeah, we might, yeah, I guess we can pull something off. Maybe wait till after you get done with, because you, you're not going to walk out at 4 p.m. like the end. You still have to probably do shit and then chill. We're usually, we're usually done by the end of the call time. I guess I guess we'll play by ear. If it's only eight episodes, we can definitely just, if we have to, split it up. Four on Saturday and four on Sunday. Unless it just gets so fire, we're like, no, we're gonna keep going. We'll figure that out. Randall, what you gonna be doing? Is he frozen or is he just doing? He's just doing that. I can see the you can see the the compression artifacts still moving everywhere. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> um. What was the question again? What I'm going to be doing this week? Yes, sir. Um, besides work, obviously Spider-Man, Stranger Things. He's going to do Spider-Man? Wow. That's um, crazy. I know I'm going to work on something. I just haven't decided what I'm going to work on. Okay. you putting a band together? No. <laughs> Although it would be cool if we could play some... Rock Band? Yeah, man. If I can't make that mistake again, I bought Rock Band 4, like, as soon as it came out, I'm like, yes. So I'm... And then I realized none of the songs that I bought DLC for the previous game transferred over because of licensing. They didn't have the guitar anymore. I was like, fuck, man. Like, oh, You were like, fuck. Well, yeah, because the licensing thing. Like, we had a lot of DLC that didn't transfer over. It sucks. I'm just tired of maining characters, and when they make a sequel... Remaining instruments and then that character's completely gone. That's what I'm tired of. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a tough break there for you, Brian. All right, that's all you guys got doing. You doing this week? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If I'm, I don't know what. I don't know. Between now and I guess Saturday, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know when no, we're watching Spider Man. Stranger Things is sometime in the weekend, so we'll have impressions on both those things next week. Uh, I'll prob I might stream or just maybe record Katana Zero, which is a game where you play as, as a ninja with a sword, side scrolling. I think it's one of those one hit you're dead kind of things like Hotline. Mm -hmm. Um, so I watched that. Godspeed. I was gonna play it, but then I thought uh, the Anthony's best content was watching Hotline Miami because <laughs> he was so bad it was funny. So I think <laughs> I just have to watch this and not play it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so I got it. I just got to play it. Hopefully it's not as difficult as Hotline Miami. Because <laughs> fuck. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I don't know when I'll be streaming. Fourth, oh, oh, everyone have a safe 4th of July. Please don't fucking explode your hands. Be safe out there. People who know how to use fucking fireworks, let them use it. Don't be drunk idiots going, ah, and then your fucking left eye is missing. Like, be safe, drink safe. Drink safe? Drink responsibly. responsibly. Yeah. And yeah, that's drink about it. gasoline, I guess. Yeah, that's from that too. And that was it. ADLR Podcast, episode 53. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash ADLR plays. Become a Patreon. Patron. You get a bunch of stuff early. That's pretty, that's pretty much all the incentives. You get shit early. Uh, you can go to extralife.adlrplays.com to support the extra life. The proceeds from my link go to Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children. And as always, you can go to topics.adlrplays.com to suggest a topic we can talk about in future shows or come watch us live at twitch.tv slash adlr to talk to us as we record and we can just have a conversation like Zordon underscore Zed did. Forever immortalized in my podcast now. See, we, see? You're welcome. Anyway, this is it. Thank you guys for watching, listening, both See you guys next week. Bye.